YouTube ads have changed dramatically over the last year. Placement targeting is gone and so are keywords. Ad creative matters a lot more now and oh yeah, there's more AI than ever before. Don't worry, I've designed this masterclass to show you step by step how to run YouTube ads profitably with all of these new changes in mind. My name is Neil and I run Lynx Digital. At this point, we're one of the biggest YouTube ad agencies out there. And this is the sort of training that I have given to my own internal employees, as well as hundreds of our students with our YouTube ads course. So strap in and get ready to start getting some great results with YouTube ads. Now, just a bit of housekeeping before we jump in, this tutorial slash masterclass is divided into four sections. And if you are somebody that's never run ads before, I recommend that you watch all four sections. That's because I will be breaking down all of the little terminologies, all of the definitions and strategies step-by-step step right from the beginning, just like how I would for a brand new employee. However, if you are somebody that has run ads before and you're just looking for the 2023 updated syllabus, well then I recommend that you skip ahead to this point right here in the video, but be sure to watch the creative and scaling sections because they do have a lot of new updates. And with that being said, let's jump into my computer and start with YouTube ads right in the beginning. All right, before we jump into the ads manager, we need to understand what YouTube ads are and how they work. And the first thing we'll be discussing is the ad account structure. More importantly, how YouTube ads are laid out. Now, even before you run any sort of YouTube ads, you are going to need a Google account. Now, if you are somebody that's planning to use your own audience on say YouTube, or you are somebody with an established business and you've run things like PPC ads before, maybe you use some of Google's other assets like Google Optimize, maybe you have Tag Manager set up already, you have Google Analytics or Search Console set up, and you wanna use this YouTube ads for that business, what I recommend is that you use that Google account for your YouTube ads. Now, once you have your Google account set up, uh, what you're going to need to do is set up a brand new AdWords account. And don't worry, I will be showing you step-by-step -step how to do this later on in the video. Right now, I just want to showcase how these things are laid out. So inside your ad account, um, your AdWords account is where all of the fun happens. And what I recommend is that if you are somebody that's running multiple businesses, maybe you have several different brands under a business, I recommend setting up a brand new AdWords account for each different brand in your business. And the reason for this is say one brand is targeting people that are super old in one part of the world and the other brand is for younger people in the opposite side of the world. You don't want the ad data getting mixed up in that AdWords account. The second thing is if one of your brands is kind of on the edge with Google policy, uh, you want to make sure that you're saving yourself against uh, some sort of uh, ad account ban. So in case that does happen, your entire business doesn't stop advertising, just an ad account gets shut down, but you at least you can use your other AdWords account and keep rolling. That's kind of the best practice that we suggest with AdWords account. So within your Google account, you have your AdWords account, and then within your AdWords account, you have these things called campaigns. And think of campaigns as like the main container of your ads. These are gonna be things that hold all of your ad groups and your ads. And this is where you're going to be able to decide on the, the different marketing objectives that your ads are going to be running on. And this is also where you set the budgets for your ad campaign. So what are the different ad objectives you ask? Well, don't worry, we'll get to it. But think of it this way. If you're trying to do a remarketing campaign or you're trying to do a fall sale campaign, you're going to be making those distinctions at the campaign level. And that's why this level is very important. Now, within your campaigns, you will have these things called ad groups. And this is where you go in and you decide on the targeting and placement of your ads. This is basically where you get to figure out who is going to see your ad. You can also set things like bids um, and even sometimes budgets for your ads, as well as the scheduling for when your ads are actually going to be shown. So this is where the meat and potatoes of your actual ads happen. And then within your ad groups, you have your actual ad slash creative level. And this is where you pick which video is actually going to run as an ad. And then you can also do things like change the text of the ad, figure out what the call to action button is. So just to recap, you have your Google account, which holds your AdWords account, um, and you can have multiple AdWords accounts for different brands. Within each AdWords account, you have different campaigns, and these hold all the different marketing objectives. And then finally, you, you have the ad group, 
which determines the targeting as well as the ads, which are the actual videos that you're going to be running as ads. And if a lot of this does sound a little bit confusing, here's a diagram that kind of breaks down what a typical ad account might look like. This one's a little bit confusing because it has multiple ad groups as well as multiple creatives within that ad group. In the beginning, I really recommend that you follow the one, one, one structure. What that is, is essentially only running one ad. So one video per ad group and only running one ad group per campaign. So unlike this example here, you'll only be running a campaign with a single ad group and a single ad within that ad group. And the reason for this is one, it's a lot simpler and a lot easier to organize, especially when you're getting up and started. And the second reason is, is that you want to eliminate as many variables as possible. In the beginning, Google has absolutely no data inside of your ad account. So it has no idea on how to optimize. And for that reason, you want to be in control of all of the variables that Google allows you to alter. Now, once you do have that ad data and you do feel a lot more comfortable inside the AdWords manager, feel free to break out of this rule. Uh, maybe you can add more ad groups to split test uh, targeting or maybe add different creatives to split test. You can do all of that. But in the beginning, I highly recommend that you stick to this format. I want to give you guys an example of these variables that I'm talking about. Let's say you run a apparel company for women, but you aren't really sure what your target audience is uh, in terms of age. Maybe you think it's women over 40 and maybe you think it's women under 40. So what you're going to do is set up two different campaigns and within each campaign, you're going to have a single ad group and the variables that you're going to be testing, which is age in our case, whether women are over 40 or under 40 uh, that respond better to our apparel line, you're going to be testing this on the campaign level. So one campaign, one ad group, and within that ad group, you will say, okay, I'm only targeting women under 40. And then in the other ad group in the other campaign, you're going to be setting the targeting as women over 40. And within these campaigns and ad groups, you're only going to be testing a singular video ad. So at the end of the day, what you're left with is two campaigns where there's only one variable that's different between the two. And that way you can compare apples to apples and oranges to oranges. And don't worry if this section doesn't make too much sense. Watch the rest of the video, get to the scaling section in this tutorial masterclass, and then come back to this section. And I promise it will make a lot more sense. All right, next up, uh, we quickly discussed campaign objectives. These are the different marketing objectives that you can set on the campaign level. So let's really take a look at what the differences between all of these are and when you should use each one of them. When you are building a brand new campaign, you will be presented with these options here. And one thing to note is that the targeting between all of these different campaign objectives remains the same regardless of which option you choose. The only things that change is how that campaign is going to be optimized and what it's going to be optimizing for and how you're going to be charged and what sort of ad creatives you can run. So each of these sections actually limits you in the ways you are able to run YouTube ads and how you're also charged. Let's quickly go over what a few of these campaign objectives are. So we'll quickly start off with website traffic. So this is a campaign objective where Google tries to optimize for as much web traffic as possible. Now, Google doesn't care if the people visiting your website are actually going to turn into customers. It's just trying to send as many people to your website as possible. And the same goes for product and brand consideration and brand reach and awareness campaigns. So in these scenarios, Google is just trying to get your ad in front of as many eyeballs as possible. It doesn't care if these people will actually turn into customers. The app promotion objective is for those of you that have a mobile app and are optimizing for downloads and store visits and promotions are for those of you that have a brick and mortar store and are trying to get more foot traffic. And then finally, we have the create a campaign without a goals guidance uh, campaign objective, which is essentially what it sounds like. Google does not do any sort of optimization here. And the only real time we actually suggest that you use it is if you are going after one of the very specific bidding options. However, for most beginners and most people, People watching this video here, what I recommend is that you use the sales or leads 
campaign objective. If you are somebody with a e-commerce store or uh, a digital product or someone with a website where there is a purchase now button and you're trying to get more sales, then I would use the sales objective. If you are somebody that is collecting leads, whether that's in the form of phone numbers or emails, I would really recommend that you stick to the leads campaign objective. All right, with campaign objectives figured out, let's jump into the different ad formats that are available with YouTube ads. Now, a lot of you might be surprised to find out that there's a lot of different YouTube ads specifically. When most people think of YouTube ads, they think of the skippable video ads that play before a YouTube video. However, there's a lot more inventory with YouTube ads that's at your disposal. There's a lot of options out there, so let's break them down and figure out which one is best suitable for you. We'll start off with overlay ads. These are the banner ads that appear on top of native organic YouTube videos. You probably have seen them before. Next up, you have your bumper ads, and these are the ads that are less than six seconds long and that play at the beginning of YouTube videos. Then we have the infamous non-skippable video ads. These are the 15, sometimes even 20 second ads that you can't skip and they play in the middle of a organic YouTube video. Next up, we have the in-feed ads and this is formally known as the discovery ads. These are static ads, so they don't interrupt the video that appear on either the search result, so they'll be the top search result when you go on YouTube or on the homepage or on the suggested bar on your right-hand column. You probably have also seen these as well. And then finally, we get to the ad type that most people associate with YouTube ads, which is the skippable video ads. Now, these are the ads that play in the middle of videos, sometimes even at the beginning of videos that run for five seconds without the skip button. And then after five seconds, the skip button pops up and then people can skip them. So these are the bread and butter of YouTube ads. And this is what I assume that most of you are here to learn about. And what I really recommend is that you actually run with these sort of ads and master them for before moving on to the other types of ads. These are usually the most profitable ads that you can run on YouTube. Now, a quick note, YouTube also has these thing called YouTube short ads. Now you may have seen them. They're the ads that pop up in between YouTube shorts when you're scrolling up on your mobile phone. We won't be covering these ads in this tutorial here because they're pretty new. But if you wanted to learn a lot more about YouTube short ads, watch this video right here. Let's figure out how you guys are going to be charged when you're running your ads. So if you've run ads before, you must be familiar with what bidding options are. For those of you not familiar, essentially Google AdWords is a auction based platform. You basically put down a bid of what you're willing to pay for your ad to get seen by people. And the way it works is with four main bidding options, which we will cover. All right, let's quickly go over what some of the different bidding options are on YouTube ads. So first off, we have target CPM, which is essentially a bid that you set that you want to pay for a thousand impressions. Um, there's no optimization with this bidding method. And for that reason, we absolutely recommend against using this. The next up is target CPV. It's kind of similar to target CPM, but instead of paying a bid for a thousand impressions, you set a price for a view that you want. Now the ads are optimized for views here, as opposed to just general impressions. And this is important to note here because YouTube sees views as somebody watching at least 20 to 30 seconds of your ad or clicking on it. So because YouTube is charging you on views and not impressions, they actually optimize your ads for views. However, we still don't really recommend this bidding option because you're not really there to get a bunch of views on your ads. You're there to make sales and get customers. And the next bidding option is a more common one that we use, which is maximize conversions. It does work by charging you on impressions. However, unlike target CPM with this bidding option, basically Google goes out there and tries to get as many conversions as possible with your entire budget. That's the name, maximize conversion. And for those of you asking what conversions are, these are essentially actions that a user makes on your website. And you can essentially set conversions to be whatever you want. So a conversion could be somebody clicking a button on your website, somebody adding something to your cart, maybe giving a phone number, essentially anything you want. So what we recommend is that you start off with maximize conversions as a bidding option 
first, especially in an ad account with absolutely zero data, because you want to try and get as many conversions as possible, whether you're using YouTube ads to get more phone numbers, more emails, whatever your conversion is, you want to get as many po as possible when you're first starting out. When you do have a lot of data coming in, then you can start leveraging some of YouTube ads as optimization algorithms. A real life example of using maximized conversions would be, let's say you have a hundred dollars and you're trying to get as many emails for your new newsletter as possible. So you would set your maximized conversion bid to be a hundred dollars and Google will try and go out there based on your targeting parameters and try and get as many new emails as possible with that hundred dollars. And finally, let's move on to the final bidding option that we're going to be discussing, which is the target CPA option. Now, this is the most powerful bidding option in my opinion, and the one we use the most at our agency. Now, target CPA stands for target cost per action. This is essentially a bid that you set that you are willing to pay for a specific action. And then Google will try and go out there and get that action for the bid you bid price that you set. So let's say you are a business that's trying to get sales and you say, hey, I'm willing to pay $30 in ads for every sale that I get. And then so you set your target CPA bid to $30 and then Google will go out there and try and get you a sale for $30. Now here's the catch. If Google knows that uh, it can't go out there and get you a sale for under $30, maybe it can only get you a sale for let's say 50 bucks, the campaign won't actually spend. Google won't spend your money willy nilly. So what we recommend is that you use maximize conversions as your bidding option when you're first starting out. Maybe when you get a hundred to 200 conversions, then you can switch over your campaigns to target CPA when you also see the data coming in. Maybe in your max conversion campaigns, you see that you're getting leads for let's say 10 bucks, then you can set your target CPA bid to 10 bucks. If you see sales and add to carts or say add to carts are coming in at say $25, then you can set your target CPA bid for add to carts for 25 bucks. And now finally, let's get to the ad group level and start talking about targeting options. So the big change in 2023 is that there's no more contextual targeting. So this is the biggest change for YouTube ads for this new year. That means Google is removing placement targetings keyword targetings and topic targeting. So in the past, you used to actually be able to pick specific placements where your ads will get shown. So you could pick other people's channels. You could pick specific videos where your ads would show up. You could pick specific keywords. Let's say you have a beer trimmer brand. You could actually use the keyword like best beer trimmers and then show up for all of the videos that rank for that keyword. So you used to be able to do that. You can't anymore. But why exactly is Google getting rid of such a powerful targeting option? Well, Google thinks that its AI and its powerful algorithms can actually go out there and find customers for a cheap cheaper price than you can with these placement and keyword campaigns. And for a lot of people, I think that's true. I think Google knows your customers and its own customer data a lot better than a individual marketer. So what we're seeing now is that initial data in a brand new ad account is a little bit more harder and a little bit pricier to gather. But once you do get that initial data, Google's algorithms are so powerful that they actually end up being more profitable than those old campaigns. And what I relate this to is when Google first introduced target CPA a few years ago, everybody was using the max conversion bidding option and they were doing great. And then when target CPA first came out, it was, you know, a little bit weak. It wasn't performing as well as max conversions, but slowly as Google's algorithms got more powerful, it actually became the preferred bidding option and is now way more profitable than most max conversion campaigns. So let's actually take a look at what is left with the tar targeting options that are available to us. So the most basic targeting option available to you when you're running ads is demographic targeting. So essentially you're you're able to make an audience based on somebody's age, their gender, parental status, household income. You can even get into more specific shared traits, like if they were a college student or not, if they're a homeowner or a new parent. You're also able to uh, target via geography and languages spoken within the demographic targeting. This is like layer one when we come talk about your targeting options. The second type of targeting option that is available to you is your own data segments. So these are audiences that are based on their past interactions with your business, whether that's through your own videos on YouTube, your previous video ads, maybe you've had run ads before, and you can target people with this data segment. 
You can also show your ads to audiences that have actually interacted with your website. So think remarketing. And then we have the customer match targeting option. And these would be audiences that are built on your first party online and offline data. So think email lists that you've gathered, uh, phone number lists, Google ads data if you've run PPC ads in the past. If you wanna upload that data, you can target those people with their emails or phone numbers. And then we also have similar segments. So if you've run Facebook ads before, this would be like the lookalike audiences. So this targeting option essentially helps you by expanding the reach of your best performing audiences by targeting new users with similar characteristics, right? To your, either your data segments or your customer match list. So in order to show you the rest of the targeting options, I, I thought it would be best to actually show you a live demonstration. Um, that way you can also see where these targeting options are located. And again, don't worry, I will show you how to set up this AdWords dashboard that you see here just a little bit further along in the video. But for now, please follow along. So you're going to click tools and settings, and there's a couple ways to do this. The first is through the audience manager. Here you will be able to create new audiences based on your different targeting options, right? The other way to do this is through your campaigns itself. So we're gonna come in here, create a brand new campaign, and don't worry, I'll go through all of this a little bit later on, and um, you will understand what all of these uh, different options are going to be. So we're gonna scroll down to where we can see the audience, uh, and the way we're gonna do this is in the people area. So this is exactly where we get to pick who our ideal audience for our ads are going to be. Um, so what you can do is click create an audience. And this is going to give us all of the different targeting options available to us. So like I mentioned, you get all of your little demographic options, um, like I mentioned. So you get to choose between age, uh, gender, parental status, household income. And then you can also do location based targeting the locations area as well as languages. But let's talk about what some of the more advanced options are. All right, the first thing that I want to cover is the interest based targeting options. So these are going to be your main audiences that you're going to first start off with. And the two that we want to cover in here are the in market audiences and the affinity audiences. So what's the difference between the two? So affinity audiences are made up of people that are generally interested in a specific interest or a topic, right? So examples of this would be people that are interested in, let's say, news and politics and are, say, avid news readers, right? And then you can go around and take a look at what is available for your specific business um, or product to service, right? So there's a lot of different choices out here. And these are basically people that might be interested in a specific sub interest. In market audiences, however, are people that are actively looking to purchase something in the specific interest. So, for example, if we go down to arts and apparel, right, uh, and activewear, let's say running apparel, these would be people that are actively looking to purchase something in the running apparel category. And these type of audiences are very, very powerful. Now, what I recommend is for people starting out is going after people with in market audiences. And again, I will talk a lot more about what sort of audiences to pick in the scaling and launching section of this masterclass at the end of the video. Okay, the next big targeting option available to you is going to be custom segments. And these are going to be essentially audiences that are built by Google based on a few different parameters. So you can do one of the parameters, which is audiences based off of people that have searched certain things inside of Google. So on like the actual Google search, and basically you're going to put in keywords uh, like it's showing right here. And Google will go out there and build an audience of people that actually search for those terms. So let's stick with our running theme here um, and we will make a keyword. So let's do run running and see what Google puts out. So yeah, best running shoes for long runs. So Google has gone out there and found a audience of people that would be searching for this. Now, similar to the in market audiences, you can also build custom segments based on keywords with people that have shown some sort of purchase intent. So what is the difference between these custom segments uh, with purchase intentions versus the in market audiences? Well, with this, you can get a lot more specific. Let's say you're not just selling any sort of uh, running apparel 
apparel, you are selling a specific type of trail running shoe. So I can come here, put in trail running and get a custom audience of people that are searching for, let's say ultra trail running shoes, right? And now built a custom segment audience based on purchase instant intentions. That is a lot more specific than just regular running apparel. So that is why this is a little bit more powerful for your targeting options. All right. So now that you're aware of all the different targeting options available to you, right before we can go ahead and start running some ads, we have to talk about one final thing. Now, I know this is a lot of theory, but uh, trust me, you are spending a lot of money. You're going out there, you're giving Google a lot of money. You want to be able to track the performances of your ad campaign so that you can actually figure out, okay, are my ads working? Are is all this money that I'm spending actually bringing in money. And the best way to do this is through conversion tracking. Now, conversion tracking can be a very complex system on its own. It's a very in-depth topic. If you want a little bit more information on it, check out this video here. But what I will say is if you are somebody that is going to be spending a lot of money on YouTube ads, or you're going to have a very complex business, what I recommend is that you either hire somebody to set up conversion tracking for you or you use a third party company. Now there's a few companies out there that will do this for you. But for most of you watching this tutorial, I will break down how to set up conversion tracking in the most basic of forms. And this should get you going right away. So we have to talk about what conversion tracking is. It's essentially tracking your customers and their entire customer journey. Now, earlier in this video, I mentioned a conversion is essentially an action that a customer takes after seeing your ad. And this can depend business to business, product to product, right? However, you want to be recording each conversion or, or each action that your customer takes throughout every single step in the customer journey. And you want to measure this all the way through. So if you are a e-commerce company and maybe you're selling e-commerce products, you want to be able to track your customers that click from your ad and then go to your product page, your landing page. And then you want to track all of the people that hit the add to cart button and treat that as a conversion people that purchase, that's a conversion. People that purchase upsells, that's another conversion. And you want to assign values to these conversions. So in the purchase case, obviously you want to assign the value of whatever the product price was so that you can get a value associated with that conversion. So every purchase will include a purchase price or every purchase conversion will include a purchase price. If you are somebody that is collecting leads, so you're selling like an information product, you want to be able to track people that uh, hit your landing page, either submit their phone number, email, all that sort of stuff. And then also go to your thank you page. Um, maybe you are somebody that has a lead magnet. So you're running things like a VSL, a webinar, or you're giving out a free PDF, those sort of things. You want to be able to track and put conversions on every single page on your customer journey, on your funnel, as we like to call it. So your call booking page, your call confirm page, your purchase page, if that's applicable. So let's jump back into AdWords and I will show you how to set up conversions. So before we even run any ads, we're back in our dummy account. And don't worry, I, I will show you how to set this up. We're going to be setting up conversion trackings for a uh, opt in funnel. So let's say somebody comes to our website or they see our ad, they come to our website. We promise them, say, a free PDF. They submit their email they get the PDF, right? Pretty simple. So this is what our landing page is going to look like. They can get, you know, this um, once they put in their email. And then once somebody hits the claim now button, they get taken to this peak thanks. Um, and the way I'm going to set up conversion tracking is pretty similar. Let's say instead of a form and a PDF, maybe you had a product page and then somebody could click buy now. Uh, maybe you were selling an, uh, a, an ebook or a physical book. And again, it took you to a thank you page. It would all be very similar. So we're going to jump into our AdWords dashboard here and go into tools and settings. And under the measurement tab, we're going to click conversions. This is how you set up uh, conversions the most bare bone ways possible, but it still gets the job done. We're going to come in, click a new conversion action. And because we're mostly tracking websites, there's no phone calls or apps. Uh, we're going to click website. And now if you have tag manager installed or you have analytics installed, Google will basically scan to see if that's set up and uh, setting up conversions is going to be a lot easier. In our case, for our website, we don't. 
Okay, so I put in my website, it wasn't able to find anything. So we're gonna have to add conversion actions manually. And this is how you do it. So the first thing we're gonna do is a page view for this first page, right? So each page is gonna be based on a page load system and each page is going to represent a conversion. So on our first page, it's going to be somebody that comes and views a page. And then on the second is when some, they're only going to reach this thank you page once they've submitted their emails, right? So the second conversion is going to happen when somebody reaches this thank you page. So if we go back to Google AdWords for the first page, I'm going to select page views, right? Right? You have a bunch of different options. So if you are running maybe a e-commerce website, so instead of a um, form that th somebody has to submit, and this is a claim now button, this would be a buy now button. If, let's say you were selling a $5 ebook or a $5 physical book, then you would make this a um, purchase conversion, right? So, or if it was add to cart as opposed to purchase now, then you would click add to cart or subscribe if it was a newsletter, right? For us right now, we're just doing page view because this is what the, the customer does. We're going to make the name test page view and then the value. Uh, we won't use a value for this conversion action right now because it's, it's, it's a free ebook. And then, okay, now count is super important depending on what sort of product or service you're selling. Uh, for us, we only wanna be counting one conversion for every single people, a person that submits. Uh, we don't wanna be having repeat uh, conversions because it doesn't matter for us. But if you are running, let's say, an e-commerce store, you wanna count every single sale that you're getting, every single purchase by the same person, right? Um, so this is gonna be great. Um, so I'm gonna click my view through. You can leave this at 30 days, engage view, view through yeah one day this is perfect and i'm just going to leave all of these settings default now the second conversion that i'm going to add is for the second page when people reach the thank you page and instead of a page view this time i'm going to say this was someone that submitted a lead form right obviously they came to this page because they submitted that form so i'm going to classify this as submit lead form let's say test and then you can play around with this if this is the only conversion uh, that you're optimizing for. Really depends on what sort of business you're running. But for now, I'll just uh, leave this unchecked for us. And then for value, again, I'm gonna go with don't use a value. But again, if I was selling this say for $5, then I would come here, um, use the same value for each conversion and it would make it say $5. If this, this ebook that I was giving away, this PDF was worth anything. And then uh, click once again and everything is done. And then we're going to click save and continue. Now there's a few different ways that you can actually install conversion tracking. You can obviously email this to your webmaster or do it using Google tag manager. These are a little bit more advanced, but for us right now, we're going to go through the Google tag. Essentially the Google tag is a all in one piece of code that you need to install throughout your website, wherever conversions happen. And then you will need to install the event snippet code um, for whatever specific page that that uh, conversion happens on. So for us, we don't have a uh, Google tag, uh, a global tag uh, installed. So I'm going to install a global tag and essentially you can install this manually and take this piece of code. And this essentially needs to go on the entire website, right? So I'm going to go back to my page builder, go into my JavaScript. So every single page that uh, we're going to be recording conversions in, I need this piece of code. So I'm going to go to both pages here, go into my JavaScript, put in a new JavaScript and then put in this global tag. Then I'm going to go back into, I'm going to click done. Uh, then I'm going to go into my individual events and then copy this event, uh, this conversion for wherever it happens on our customer journey, right? So the page view happens on this first page and then I will put this code on the first page. The submit lead form happens on the second page. So I will come here, paste it on the second page and then we are done here and we are done here. Um, I can hit save, republish this page, save republish this page and click done. And that's essentially it. That's how you set up conversion tracking. Um, 
Again, this is unverified for now because uh, we just did it. Again, if you are having trouble with this, reach out to us on either our Facebook group or watch the other tutorials. Let's get to the fun part. And this is where we're going to be launching our very first campaign. And in order to do that, you're gonna have to sign up for your Google AdWords account. And the best way to do that is to go to ads.google.com. You're gonna be taken to this page right here. And what you can do is just click start now. Um, since I already have a Google AdWords account, I'm gonna skip this part, but essentially it's pretty self-explanatory. You click start now, you put in your information. We're just going to jump into my Google AdWords dashboard. So once you have submitted all your information, you're gonna be taken to a page that looks exactly like this. And the first thing you're gonna do is go into tools and settings, go into settings um, under billing, and then make sure that you've uploaded a uh, payment card, uh, whatever your payment method is, right? And this is where you'll be able to see all of the different uh, information regarding your Google ads account. So once you've set up your payments, you can go back into your main dashboard. And then this is now where we can start creating our very first campaign. So let's go ahead and just click brand new campaign like we just did. And this is after the fact that we've actually set up conversion tracking. So let's go with the example that we are a company that helps people get in fit by running marathons, right? Let's go with that example. We've been going all over this running theme all um, tutorial. Let's continue with it. So the thing that we're going to do is um, take people, you know, because we're helping people get fit through running, um, the thing that we're going to promote is our running program. And um, what we're going to be selling is a PDF. So similar to the conversion tracking thing. So what I'm going to do is uh, my campaign objective, we're going to be optimizing for leads. And because we have a page view action for the one that we just set up, let's just pretend that it's already set up. We're going to optimize for this event. So when people go into our example, and then they submit their emails, after which we're going to be uh, taken into this campaign type. So this is where you can kind of pick what sort of uh, YouTube campaign or Google campaign that you're running. For us, because we're running YouTube ads, we're gonna click video uh, and then go ahead. And then our goal again is to drive conversions. We want as many people as possible to give us their email to sign up for our running PDF, right? That helps people uh, lose weight. Uh, through trail running. And then we're just gonna click next. And then so the basics of our ad campaign are now presented to us and we can kind of go through this together. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is name our campaign. So the first thing I'm going to do is click LD, that's for Links Digital. And I'll kind of walk you through our nomenclature for setting up these campaign names. Um, so this was a campaign that we're running to get new leads, so new leads, uh, the conversion, and uh, and we only want people that uh, live in the U.S. that are under 35, and then uh, this is going to be ad number one, right? So we're only targeting U.S. Um, let's say you wanted to target another location, like say a specific state or something. Uh, for us, the U.S. is pos uh, is uh, great. Now we can pick our language. So uh, I know my ad is actually only in English. So I'm going to click English. If your video ad is going to be in a different language, you can pick a different language, right? For us, English is great. So like I mentioned, now we get our bid strategy, right? So we get presented with the options that we come across. And because this is a brand new ad account, we're just trying to get as many emails as possible. I'm going to go with uh, maximize conversions. Um, now, this is going to be a very important thing for you to decide, which is how much money do you wanna spend on your campaigns? This is gonna be pretty subjective, um, depending on how quickly you want results. However, I will tell you to stick to the end of this video when I start talking about launching and scaling campaigns, and it'll help you decide what your initial budgets should be. For now, we're just gonna go within a easy $50 per, per day, right? Um, and then the ad can actually start today and uh, it can start at this time. Now you used to be able to uncheck some of these networks, but because we're using the leads objective, we actually have to allow our ads on their display network. So next up we have content exclusions. This is basically where you can choose what sort of YouTube videos your ads will show on. Again, they just recently moved this. However, I think the default setting is perfect. However, if you are a brand that has um, 
a very small narrow audience or you're you know you can't be advertising your products or service everywhere definitely look into narrowing your content where your ads can be shown for us it really doesn't matter and we're not really worrying about site links just yet this is a bit more of an advanced tactic and it really doesn't matter at uh, the beginner level i am going to click additional settings just to see a few things um, you are allowed to day part which means you can set specific times that your ad will run but for our scenario we want this ad to run whenever you can also frequency cap and i I recommend that people do this uh, to save on ad costs. Frequency capping essentially ensures that the person watching doesn't see your ad over and over and over again. So I'm going to do a impression cap. So I don't want the same person to wa uh, see my ad more than three times per week. And then I don't want them to view it more than one time per week. And these are pretty standard frequency capping. This is pretty important. I, I want my ads to not be shown on tablets or TV screens. If you are an advertiser that would like to advertise on TVs and ta tablets, do it at your own discretion. From what we've found is that these two placements don't really convert. Uh, for YouTube ads. We're gonna stick with just mobile and computers. Again, if you wanna do this for your own brand, go ahead, try it out. But what I recommend is just stick to computers and mobile tablets. If you are somebody that's also running a, let's say something for desktops, maybe your products are for desktops or you're uh, running something that's just for mobiles, right? Pick appropriately depending on your situation. For us, we can advertise everywhere. Now we're down to the ad group level and I will now uh, define my audience. So we'll do in market, okay, keyword being a uh, keyword of, let's say uh, running, runners. Okay, and this is again, uh, how we discussed in the targeting section that we're coming up with our actual audience. So this time around, I am going to do a in-market audience. Let's go into browse, in-market. These are people that are looking for, they wanna get fit, right? So let's see if they have anything around fitness. Uh, let's see, sports and fitness. Oh, I don't want that big, big audience. Fitness, oh yeah, fitness products and services. Let's see, we not necessarily exercise equipment and uh, let's go with fitness online fitness classes yeah this would be people that would be interested in learning to lose weight with trail running and our uh, pdf that we're promoting this would actually be a great audience right and then we could do demographics so we said this could be uh either male or female but they have to be under let's say 35 right let's go to additional demographics and then yeah this can this can be top 10% to let's say top 10%. So we only want uh, people who can afford our very expensive coaching program. Um, and then we're only going to go after that audience. And that's pretty much it. Um, so for our first round of audiences, let's see, um, let's do uh, in market. Okay, boom, I'm gonna save this audience right here. And one of the most important things that I can tell you is you wanna isolate for optimized targeting. Now, this is a new feature, again, Google's rolling out. I don't know how it's going to work on your specific ad account. If you are somebody that wants to test out optimized targeting, you can, uh, but like I said, create a separate campaign. So if I was somebody who was interested in say optimized targeting, I would create a separate campaign and then keep everything the exact same and then just click this, right? However, for me, I don't want to use optimized targeting at this moment. So I'm going to check this off I'm going to go into advanced settings and now we're at the ad section level. Okay. Now that we're at the ad channel level, we can actually run and create our video that's going to be seen by people. So what you can do is basically run any single YouTube video that you Im imaginable. All you have to do is just upload it to YouTube. You can even upload it as a unlisted video, which is what we suggest. And then just grab the URL of that video and then paste it here. So for the demonstration purposes, let me go into our YouTube channel and I will take, let's say this video and I will copy the URL for this and then uh, paste it into this. So this is going to act as our ad for the uh, product that we're promoting, right? Now we have a few sections that we need to fill out and these are gonna be important details about the ad. So firstly, where exactly is this ad going to? So let's go links, digital agency, 
com, and then our URL was peak. And then I don't necessarily need to have a different display URL. And this is usually done if like your final URL is very long and it's confusing and it's a bunch of letters and numbers. Sometimes people like to use a shorter little term to describe it. Next up is going to be our call to action. And I will say either learn, learn more is a great button, or I will say get PDF. And then now we can write a headline, grab this PDF. And then long headline, uh, talk to the experts, perfect description, beautiful. Um, and then I don't really need any sort of tracking right now. And we have a auto generated companion banner and this is just gonna be ad number one. So that's pretty much it guys. Uh, what I suggest is only again, running one single ad per ad group per campaign. And it really is as simple as that. So all you do is hit create and then that's it, your campaign is pretty much ready. And what you can do is come inside of your AdWords dashboard, go to campaigns, and then you will be able to see that your campaign is after getting reviewed, running. That's essentially how you launch a campaign. Okay, so now that we've launched our campaign, you can see that it's um, back in your dashboard. I've just put this one to pause just because we don't wanna be <laughs> wasting a little bit money on uh, these test campaigns. So uh, how do you go about actually looking at the performance of this specific campaign. Again, I can make a whole video on each of the metrics and what to look for when you're running YouTube ads. And in fact, I have over here uh, or in the description, wherever that's going, that video is going to be. But um, for the general gist, uh, you're gonna come inside the columns section and this is going to be on your campaigns tab in your main AdWords dashboard. So come into columns and you're just gonna customize your columns. Um, now, some of you might have conversions um, or conversions version actions just by default um, here. Some of you might have to hit custom columns. Um, in our case, we do. So with this, uh, we'll just say, we'll do a new conversion and then we'll do all conversions, right? Um, so let's say versions. Um, and then essentially I can take a look at all the conversions that happened uh, with my campaign. I can then go ahead and add a few other custom columns. Uh, and you can really come in here and mess around with all of these metrics. Um, you can take a look at uh, what you've spent. I really recommend that you say put costs here so you can see how much you're actually spending every single day. Um, and then important things like, let's go over the few important ones. Um, uh, the number of impressions you've got, what your CPM is, um, what your CPC, which is your cost per click is going to be. Um, then we can also take a look at uh, CTR, which is the click through rate on your ad. And don't worry, when I get to the uh, actual creative section, you're gonna understand how important this metric is because it's the biggest indicator into telling us whether your ad is actually good or not. And then within conversions, we can actually look at the specific conversions that you set up. So let's do that. Let's do a number of signups. Right, so we're gonna click conversions again. And then we're, we're gonna go down to conversion action, right? And then these are all of the conversions that we set up. So this was the first one, this was the second one. So I'm gonna quickly do this one. So now we have all of the conversions. And it, let's say if I wanted to get um, my cost per conversion, so how much money did I spend getting a, a sign up? What I could do is come inside here, click cost. Uh, actually, I gotta. It's gotta be cost, performance, cost, and then I'm gonna do divided by, go to conversions, and then come down to conversion actions, and then pick my conversions. So I can see um, my cost divided by how many submissions that I had, right? So, uh, cost per sign up, and then boom. Um, and I'll save it, and then let's just say this is test one, and then save and apply. And now you'll be able to come inside your AdWords dashboard and take a look at uh, what your cost is, what your conversions are, what your cost per conversions are. You can look at your click-through rate, your view rate, impressions, uh, what the cost per click is, and start making judgments on what uh, to do with your ads. And then you can do it over the uh, different time periods as well, right? So today we just launched this campaign. If you wanted to just look at today's data, you could. Again, um, obviously you can enable, pause, or remove campaigns. I highly recommend that you don't ever remove campaigns. 
um, just because you'll lose the ad data inside them. And it's also always nice to come back and see, okay, even if your campaigns didn't perform well, okay, which campaigns didn't perform well, which audiences didn't do well. Um, and that's pretty much it. Now let's move on to one of the most important things, which is scripting. All right, let's talk about one of the other big changes that's really happened over the last little bit with YouTube ads, which is that your ad account performance is really dictated on your ad performance. Means that your ad, your actual video is way more impactful in terms of how much money YouTube ads will make than ever before. So it's super important that we actually nail how to make really effective video ads, because the truth is you can have a great offer. You can have great targeting and great campaign structure, all of that stuff. But if you don't have a good video ad, you won't make any money. And this is because Google is again, moving to more of this AI targeting. We're getting rid of specific placements and specific keywords and more to giving power to Google and its algorithms and letting it figure out where to find our customers, especially in the beginning of ad accounts, when it doesn't have a lot of data, your ad is going to have to carry most of the weight when it comes to getting your conversions. And for that reason, I really do think 2023 and beyond creative is going to be king. There's going to get a point with YouTube ads where you don't need to set up any campaigns or pick your targeting. You're just going to be able to put your YouTube video up and then let Google do its thing. Google will find your customers based on no targeting parameters whatsoever. That's what we're going to get to. So it's really, really crucial that you nail your ads. What is a way that we actually figure out if an ad is doing well or not? So the most obvious answer is if your ad is actually producing a positive ROI or return on investment, let's say your ads are bringing in $2 for every dollar of ad spend, right? It doesn't matter how crappy the ad is, that is a fantastic ad. As long as it's producing a positive ROI, it is a good ad. Doesn't mean it can't be improved or anything, but I'm just saying at the bare minimum, if it's not broken, keep running with it. However, if you are at the point, say, let's say, even if you are getting an ROI of 200%, you still want to go for more. What are some ways that we can actually tell that ads are doing well or not? The biggest metric that we look at at Lynx Digital, and I teach this to all of my students and my employees, is look at your CTR. This is going to be your click through rate. This is going to be the percentage of people that actually, when they see your ad, click on it. And why is this metric super important? Well, this is because on the uh, ad inventory side, when people are actually seeing ads, it's consistent throughout the platform, right? Your in-stream ad is going to look like everybody's in-stream ad. I mean, in terms of placement, in terms of how many pixels it's going to take up on a screen. So it's a very good comparison to be able to compare two ads beside each other, even if the offers and stuff are different. So what makes a good click-through rate? Well, at bare minimum, what we recommend is that your click-through rate is at least 1.5%. So even if you're getting a 10x ROAS, right, a, a return on ad spend or an ROI, even if you know your backend metrics are fantastic, but your click-through rate is not over 1.5%, you can probably improve that ad. I would say a bare minimum decent ad is anywhere from 1.5% to 2%. Um, that's on the lower end. We like to see that number a little bit higher. Good ads, the ones that consistently perform good, they bring in a good ROI. They're usually from 2 to 3%. Um, and then every now and then with ad accounts, you'll start seeing some really good ads. And these are ads that are getting anywhere from three to 5%. And with the right amount of targeting uh, constriction and the right audiences, you can even get ads that convert with a click through rate of five to seven, eight percent. And those are what we call our superstar ads. Those are the ones that you keep seeing on YouTube over and over. Those are the ones that have been running for years with millions of views. Yes, they do exist and they are out there, but you are gonna have to work a little bit to make an ad that can get that high click-through rate. Now, the other big change that we're noticing with YouTube ads is that YouTube as a whole is maturing as a platform. It's not this brand new place that it was back in like 2018. A lot more people are taking YouTube seriously. We're seeing big brands come onto the platform. We're seeing creators step up their own content on the platform 
platform. And that's making it a little bit more difficult for advertisers. Even uh, in the last few years, I've seen a flood of advertisers come to YouTube competing over that limp, uh, that same amount of inventory. So what this has resulted into is that the base level of quality required for a good ad has gone up slightly. Now gone are the days where you could just take like a really crappy iPhone video with distorted audio, run it and still see profitable ads. I'm sorry that those ads are now few and far in between. Again, that doesn't mean you can't hit a home run with those ads if you have an offer that is fantastic. If you have messaging that is really, really strong, you can still get away with using just an iPhone and the internal microphone. However, these ads are becoming a little bit more rare. What we're seeing is quality is starting to matter a bit more. We can take the same ad, right? In experiments that we've run, ads that are shot on a professional DSLR or mirrorless camera with professional audio versus just an, an iPhone, we're starting to see that uh, ads that are shot a little bit better do perform a little bit better. The other thing that's happened is uh, brands have realized that YouTube is a great platform to advertise on. So they've started investing a lot more money into their ads, especially if they figure out that things are working. So not only are they making better ads themselves, they're enlisting the help of other ad agencies like ours or other studios that film ads for them or they're even hiring individual content creators. We've seen a huge rise of UGC content, user-generated content, even on YouTube. Now, this is like super true for TikTok, for Facebook, but uh, now we're seeing this even come through on YouTube. So if you are a person who's somewhat struggling with coming up with ads, my advice would be don't beat yourself up over it. You can easily go and find a spokesperson, a voiceover actor, a UGC content creator for as little as like five, $10 on platforms like Fiverr who will make ads for you that are high quality. However, I deeply believe that you can still come up with really effective YouTube ads all by yourself as long as you're following this formula. And let's dive into what makes a great ad from a scripting perspective. So in the past, we used to say, you need a very strong hook to start off your videos. Um, while this is still somewhat true, uh, we have noticed because of all the content we put on YouTube and other YouTubers, uh, finding out about how to do these scripts, we've realized that a lot of people are fighting over the same eyeballs and they're all starting off with really good hooks. So what do you do in that situation? Well, you have to get the viewer's attention. So you gotta start off the ad with a attention grabber. Like think about yourself when you're watching YouTube. Uh, you probably see four to six six ads in a regular 10 minute video and all of these ads kind of blend in and they're all the same. So in order to stand out from the crowd, we really suggest that you start off with some sort of attention grabber. Now these can be things like a big uh, motion spur, waving graphics that come in, even sound effects. These are big, big components of standing out within the first second or so in your ad. Maybe you yourself have even seen this on YouTube where you've seen creators begin their ads by starting and saying something like, hey, stop, whoa, listen up, uh, or like uh, bringing in sounds like bangs, sound effects, whooshes, uh, things of that nature. And what this is designed to do is essentially break the pattern and interrupt uh, whatever little video that the person was watching and make sure that the viewer actually pays attention to the ad. And after you've done this little attention grabber, the premise still remains the same. You still wanna come in with a strong hook. This is not only gonna ensure that you can make it past the first second, but that you, the person actually watches the entirety of your ad and gets the whole gist and messaging that you're trying to pitch. So what are some good examples of hooks that we've seen? Well, these can be easily things like calling out your specific audience. If you are selling a product or service to a niche audience, definitely call them out in a hook. And this basically perks up everybody's ears that are in that audience. The second thing you can do is say something out of the norm or ask a rhetorical question or genuinely spike some curiosity, spark some discussions. Uh, these are all great methods to grab somebody's attention for a longer period of time. And if you are struggling with this, what I recommend is the next time you're actually watching YouTube and you see an ad come through and you have seen this ad a few times before, so you can pretty much validate that it's been a long successful ad. Take a look at what this creator is doing within the first few seconds specifically. What are the things that they're using 
to hook people in. You can also use third party apps to take a look at what your competitors or other people in the space are doing. Again, I've made videos on these uh, tools like Big Spy and Video Ad Vault and VidSpy. They're all linked in the channel and be sure to check them out after this video. But you can use these tools to figure out, okay, what are some things that other people that are successful at ads doing? And then use that as inspiration to come out with your own hooks. All right, next up, and this is probably the most important section of your ad, which is the promise and proof section. This comes right after your hook. So you've hooked the viewer's attention. Now you got to pitch your case and seal the deal. Basically in this section are explaining what your product or service does. Uh, you got to really explain what sort of problems or customer pain points does your product or service solve. You also have to prove that the product or service has merit. And with both of these scenarios, proving that your product or service works and then what exactly it works at, it's always better to show rather than tell. So in any time when we're making ads, we always suggest if you can show, it is better than telling. So instead of telling me what your product does, have a live demonstration. Instead of proving to me by saying, hey, uh, my product does this, give me testimonials, show me success case studies, let me know with my own eyes that your product or service works. Customers need to be convinced that your product or service works. And this is probably the biggest thing that holds back most ads. There's not enough conviction in most ads. People don't think that uh, your product or service really delivers on what it promises. You can see this with YouTube, right? Uh, back in the day, you used to have all of these ads that were like, hey, click this ad if you wanna make you know, a, a million dollars in 30 seconds. And now these ads are coming, becoming less and less frequent. It's because people are losing faith in these sort of ads. And the people that are running these ads are not doing a good job convincing people that their method really works. The ones that are still running do a great job at that. So you are going to have to follow this formula and really prove to the people that your product or service is really valuable and delivers on what it promises. And then finally, um, we've spoken a lot about this, is that you want a call to action. Uh, and this is, is a prompt in the video that tells the viewer to take a specific action. Nine out of 10 times, for those of you that are watching this video, it's your, your action that you want the viewer to take is going to be to click on the ad, right? They wanna go on to your website to do whatever the next step is, right? So at the 30 second mark or right before, uh, you definitely wanna insert a call to action which encourages people to click the link in the ad below. And then you can even have things like pointers, countdown timers, I've even seen uh, crazy animations and stuff being used to really get people to click on the link. Now, why do I say 30 seconds? Well, that's uh, usually when you get charged for a view, depending on what sort of bidding method you're using. So you really wanna get people to click on your ad and convert before. And then you also want to have a call to action at the end of your ad. Now I say, keep your ads generally under two minutes long. So you wanna be inserting this last little call to action right before those two minutes. Now you can go ahead and play around with where else you can insert this call to action, but generally you wanna have at least two to three call to actions for every two minute ad. Next, I wanna cover the thing that most people get wrong when it comes to making ads for YouTube, which is they make one really pretty ad and they put it up on YouTube, cross their fingers and they're like, okay, let's, let's see how it does. And uh, I will say nine out of 10 times that ad fails. People just then go ahead and give up. Unfortunately, the way YouTube ads work is that you are going to have to try out a few different ads before before you find one, that's a winner. And I can't really tell you how many ads it's going to take because we've had some businesses that we actually work on with an agency where the third ad that we made for them, boom, home run. We don't need to make any more ads. Then there have been ad accounts that we've made like 80 different ad variations and it was the 81st one that finally was a winner and then we figured out, okay, this is the format that we need to follow and then we were able to repeat that success. However, that success took 80 tries. So don't be discouraged if your first ad or your first few ads don't do well. The thing you wanna do is methodically test and make sure that you are testing different variations of these ads in a prompt and quick manner. So what exactly
really is testing when it comes to YouTube ad creative. So testing is you're making different ads, attacking different pains that your product or service is solving for in different ways. You're highlighting different benefits. You're highlighting like, let's say secondary or tertiary benefits of your product or service. Um, and this is because sometimes you probably don't know your product or service best, unfortunately, or you don't understand how the public perceives it. So I'll give you an example, right? We've been doing this running uh, weight loss thing, right? So for us, if we were making an ad, we would say, Hey, if you're interested in this, uh, in losing weight, check out this running thing. Now let's say we made an ad and it didn't work. What I would do uh, is in my next few variation, I would figure out, okay, what other pain points does my running program solve? Okay. Maybe instead of just weight loss, maybe it gives people mental clarity. Okay. Then I would make an ad around the mental clarity aspect. Maybe it, uh, improves posture. So I would go after people who have bad posture, maybe some back pain and then say, Hey, this type of specific running is really great for people with bad posture, right? You see that it's the same exact product or service and it does the same thing, but I'm just presenting it in a new way. And what ends up happening is a lot of the times that uh, one of these different angles that you're presenting with resonates with your audience way better than your original method. So here's my rule of thumb when it comes to testing with creative. So in most cases, you only need to change and split test like the hook and like the promise in your script, the, the, the proof and the promise, right? In general, I would say you want to be testing at least two to three different hooks. And then you want to also be testing five ish problem solution angles, right? So you want to be attacking your pain points and problems and benefits that your product or service offers and present them in up to five different ways. That way, when you combine the different hooks with the different promises, you get a whole level, a whole variation of ads. And you want to then take these ads and then start testing them across your different audiences. And that way, hopefully you find a winner soon. Now, I will give you one final bonus tip, and this is what I call my five second rule. Now, this five second rule is absolutely crucial because I think with the new emergence in short form content, people's attention spans are getting shorter and shorter. So you're going to work, have to work extra hard to keep that attention throughout your ad. So that's where this five second rule comes in. So what this five second rule states is that for no longer than five seconds in your ad, should there be no sort of attention grabbing tactic or video editing tactic. So this means every five seconds in your ad, your ad needs to do something new to keep people's attention. Whether you're changing your shot angles, you're adding B roll, you're doing transitions, maybe you add some sound effects, maybe some image overlays, some graphics, something needs to happen every five seconds to keep the people's attention. Unfortunately, this is the way the world is going. And unfortunately, this is how YouTube ads are moving. So you are going to have to employ some of these tactics on your ads if you want to see success. All right. So you've picked your targeting, you've launched your first campaign, you've installed conversion tracking, and you've made your first ad. What next? Well, let's talk about what it actually takes to launch a few campaigns and how you should go about it. And then what you should do if you start seeing a little bit of success when it comes to scaling. All right. So in the beginning, what we recommend is that you have three to five campaigns, right? So you're in these campaigns, what you're going to do is mix up your targeting. So you're going to use a combination of a few in market audiences, a few custom audiences, those custom segments based on keywords and a few affinities, right? See what the uh, your product or service best relates to figure out, okay, maybe I can target these people. Maybe I can target these people. Just have a few variations, right? What I recommend is you want to have three to five different, uh, little variations in terms of your audiences and your targeting options. Then I recommend at least three to five different ad variations. So these are going to be like the things we just talked about, you know, different hooks, different pain points. And you want to combine this with the three to five different targeting options. And like I said, if you remember, we want to be following the one, one, one structure. So each campaign, you're only isolating for one variable. So in total, you could have anywhere from nine to 25 different variations. So when you're first starting out, it's going to be at least nine to 25 different campaigns. Now you might be asking, I don't know if I have the budget for these things. What's it going to cost me? Okay. So rule of thumb is you want to aim for anywhere between two to six X your initial cost per action, right? So whatever your 
you're optimizing for uh, two to six X that cost, right? So let's say you are optimizing for emails like we were and you're comfortable paying, let's say $5 an email. So my budget per campaign would be 10 to $25, right? And so two to five X or 10 to $30, right? And the reason there's a variance in here is uh, because sometimes products are very expensive, right? Let's say you're optimizing for a purchase for a thousand dollar product. Now it's pretty scary going out there and setting the budget to $6,000 per campaign. That, that could be a lot, but what we also recommend is you know, these are guidelines. You can you can go a little bit less. Maybe if you're selling a thousand dollar product, maybe lower the number of campaigns that you're running, lower the initial budget. But do know you want to be letting your campaigns run and have enough budget in them. Okay, so you've picked your budget. You're like, okay, yeah, I, I'm good with this. How long do I let YouTube ads run? Now, unlike Facebook ads, if some of you guys are um, coming from that world. YouTube ads are notoriously slow to get off the ground, uh, but when they start working, they go off into space like a rocket ship, right? However, you do need to let these ads breathe. I wouldn't even bother if let's say a ad account has not spent at least 4X the target CPA. Let's say again, I'm going back to my leads example, right? We're collecting emails and my target CPA is five bucks. I wouldn't even look at that campaign until it spent at least $20. And I won't even like really make a decision until let's say $30 spent. Let's say my daily budget was around that $10, right? So I'm not really making a decision on that ad campaign for three days maybe four days. And that's honestly what it takes with YouTube ads. You don't, you can't be looking at immediate things when it comes to YouTube ads. You wanna be taking a look at performance three days, seven days, if not longer windows, right? So see the how, how the ads have been doing over a few days. Let the ads, let the algorithm learn a little bit and then start making decisions. So what happens if, okay, You've been letting these ads run for a little bit. How do you make a decision? Maybe it's gone to six X your target CPI, right? It spent that 30 bucks over three days. My, my rule of thumb is this. If the ROI is greater than 0.8 for a brand new account, I will let it run. So ROI is, you know, money in versus money out. So let's say I know every subscriber on my email is going to pay me $5, right? I want to get that target CPA under five. Let's say I can get uh, that email for $6. I will still let that campaign run, even though it's losing me a little bit of money because the ad account is brand new. And I know when I go from max conversion campaigns to target CPA campaigns, usually that cost will get better as the ad account ages. So my rule of thumb is if it's break even or near break even, I will let the account, uh, the ad campaign run. If it is not, then we're happy. If it's making money, let's say each email gives me $5. I can get uh, those emails for $2 and 50 cents. That means my ROI or ROAS ROAS is greater than two. That means <laughs> I'm essentially printing money. So I'm getting $2 for every dollar that I put in. I'm going to be very, very happy in that scenario. We can talk about scaling. So I wouldn't even consider uh, scaling until I have at least, at least three to five campaigns that are all consistently bringing me in a ROI or ROAS or greater than one. And when that does happen, there's really two ways to go about scaling on YouTube ads. There's the vertical approach and then there's the horizontal approach. So ver the vertical approach essentially means that you are increasing the budgets that you're spending on the audiences. And then the horizontal way is that you are going out there and finding new audiences for your ads. And both approaches are great. It really does depend on your specific business. However, I will say with YouTube ads, some of the easiest ways to scale is through vertical scaling methods, right? So you want to be increasing the budgets on the campaigns that are working and you are going to find that there's going to be a upper limit. So maybe you take a campaign that you started at, let's say $10 a day, you bring it to $50 to hundred dollars. to let's say a thousand dollars a day, and then you'll start seeing, okay, my, my performance, it's starting to taper off a little bit. And usually this happens, right? Every campaign has its upper limits. And that's why you also need to be doing a little bit of horizontal scaling where you're finding these new audiences. So you're not exhausting all of your vertical audiences, right? And this is why I suggest a mix of the two. So what should you prioritize? Should you prioritize 
uh, vertical scaling or horizontal scaling, or should you have a mix of both? If you are, what percentage uh, of budget allocation should you spend to each? I can't really answer those questions without taking a look inside your ad account. And this is because every single ad account, every single business, every single product or service is unique. However, I will say this, if you are somebody that has gotten to the point that uh, you are ready to scale, you're ready to take your ad account to the next level, you have a few profitable campaigns, and well then, that might be a great time for you to take up our team on a free strategy call. Down in the description of this video, you will find a link that allows you to book a call with somebody on our team. We will sit down, we'll figure out what's going on in your ad account, we'll tell you how to scale. Maybe even if you aren't successful with YouTube ads, we can take a look at them, see what's appropriate and we'll tell you if YouTube ads will work for your business or what are the next steps on it. This strategy call is absolutely free. There's no strings attached. You can book it at any time and somebody from my team will be more than happy to help you out with your business and YouTube ads. And that is essentially it for our YouTube ads masterclass slash tutorial. I know this was a long one. I Trust me, I started recording in the morning. It is evening. I hope you guys got a ton of value out of this. If you enjoyed this, do me a favor. Please like the video, consider subscribing. We will be coming out with a lot more valuable content just like this one in the newer future. And with that, take care guys.